I've always been a firm believer that to be a good game developer, you need two things. The first one is Stack Overflow, of course, and the second one is to think outside the box. That's why I know game devs wouldn't make good cats. But one thing game developers are good at is deceiving their players with all kinds of clever trickery by presenting them with a reality that is not quite as it seems. Hollowed out buildings that are just one thin layer of texture, decorations meant to make houses seem lived in, unreachable landscapes in the distance to add detail to the world, mirrors that are actually just the secondary camera that's mimicking their perception of reflection, or even just adding the number 2 to your game and pretending like it's something brand new. Now these practices are not secret to anyone anymore, pretty much everyone today is aware that what happens on your screen is very different than all the spaghetti happening under the hood. That's why today we're going to be taking a look at the card game that I'm currently still developing and how I've gone about sort of uh, faking certain aspects of the multiplayer. Now online card games generally require no reaction time and are usually quite slow. The only fast paced thing you'll do all game is running to and from your kitchen as fast as you can, trying to get back before your turn ends. Card games are also usually static, which which means we're not moving around, we're not teleporting all over the place, we don't have to keep track of a million different variables, both players are just standing still looking at different versions of the same screen for the entirety of the match. Let's take a look at my card game side by side so we can have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. Right off the bat, you can already tell that both players see the same game, except for some small differences like here we see Nick at the bottom and Bobo at the top, and on Bobo's screen we see Nick at the top and Bobo at the bottom. But one thing both clients do have in common is that our cards are at the bottom and our opponent's cards are up here at the top. If we hover over the cards in Nick's hand, we can see the cards move around at the top of Bobo's screen, and of course, Bobo can do the same to Nick and make the cards move on his screen. Now you might be surprised to find out that nothing you're looking at right now actually exists on the server. The cards in the player's hands, as well as our opponent's cards, only exist locally. That's why even if we remove the cards in our player's hands, we can still see our opponent's cards at the top. But how can we see Bobo's cards if Bobo doesn't even have any? What I've done is I've created three different sync lists that track cards in our deck, in our hand, and in our graveyard. These are stored on the server, of course, and then the information is sent to the client, and the client then uses that information to generate cards for us locally, and then displays those cards. The cards in our opponent's hands are actually just blank. They don't have a name, they don't have a mana cost, or anything else because we don't actually need that information. Players will never be able to see it anyways. The only information we need is how many cards our opponent has in his hand, which is determined using the hand sync list that I mentioned earlier, and then we spawn a bunch of card backs equal to that amount. That's why we can see Bobo's cards and he can see ours, even though we're not physically holding any. And if we hover over this empty area, of course, as expected, nothing happens. But if we spawn cards locally and then hover over them, now we can see them dancing on Bobo's screen. We know that our opponent's cards are always at the top of each player's screen. So instead of spawning the cards on the server and giving them a network transform, all we have to do is, whenever we hover over a card in our hand, we send a command to the server, which calls an RPC on our opponent's client, telling them to move the first card, or second card, or third card, etc. at the top of their screen. We're not moving the actual card itself, we're just moving a completely blank card that correlates with the placement of the card in the other player's hand. This gives off the illusion that your opponent's cards are physically at the top of your screen and that your opponent is actually interacting with them, but a deeper look into the spaghetti sauce reveals that everything is a lie and reality is nothing but a myth. Now let's see what happens when we play a card and spawn a Pokemon on the board. As you can see, the Pokemon spawns on both screens in different fields. Here we see it at the bottom because it's our Pokemon, and here we see it at the top because it's our opponent's Pokemon. You might have also noticed that there is now one less card in Bobo's opponent's hand. This little Pokemon card here that we just spawned is actually spawned on the server. So unlike the cards in our hand, this is a networked game object that actually exists on the server. Some of you may be wondering, how can the same networked game object be in two different places at the same time? Well, technically, these cards are in three different places. On Bobo's screen, it's at the top. On Nick's screen, it's at the bottom, and on the server, it's actually right here, in the middle of the screen. In a traditional multiplayer game, the position of networked identities, such as players and monsters, is generally handled by the server, and then their position or their movement is mimicked onto each client using something like a client RPC. This ensures that all players see the exact same thing. But what happens if you were to comment out the client RPC that's updating the monster's movement? Well, our server can still see the monster movement 
moving, but our client can't. Despite this, we can still see the survey taking damage even if it's from a monster that's invisible to our client. Meanwhile, the monster on our client's screen doesn't even move and if we shoot it, it doesn't take any damage. If we go back and shoot the air where the monster is on the server, we can damage it and even kill it. And by killing the slime on the server, we also kill the slime on the client. This works because the server determines what's actually happening, and the client determines what players perceive to be happening. Usually that perception is a carbon copy of what's happening on the server, but as you've already seen for card games, that's not always the case. So we spawn the Pokemon on the server, and then the server calls a client RPC telling our clients to move that Pokemon into specific fields based on which player spawned the Pokemon. Both players get to see the cards in different locations, even though the true location of the card is technically just in the middle of the screen, which means neither player is is seeing the card's true location, but they're seeing the cards the way we want them to see it, because what the player needs to see is not necessarily what the server is showing. It's really up to you to decide what information the player needs and how you want to go about presenting them that information. Before I wrap up this video, let's take a look at our player's hands one last time. Nice, nice, they look pretty good. Now let's take a look at the cards in their hands. As I mentioned earlier, the cards in our hands are instantiated locally based on our hand sync list. When a card is spawned, we're not actually spawning the card that we're physically dragging onto the board. If you were to use a cheat engine or something like that to change what cards are displayed in your hand, it would have absolutely no impact on what cards are actually being summoned into the game. The cards are spawned from the server based on the player's hand sync list. Just to showcase how this works, I changed the code of my game so that the card that we spawn is always the first card in our hand, regardless of which one we picked. The server determines which card is actually being spawned, so the cards in your hand are more for game feel than anything else. All of this combined allows us to create an experience that looks and feels like both players are interacting with the exact same playing board and the exact same cards, but it is a bit of an illusion. Thank you so much for watching, uh, assuming that you actually watched. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys want to see me make more videos about card games or Mirror or whatever, uh, I might consider you know making more videos. So let me know in the comment section below, and uh, I'll see what I can do. Thanks again for watching, and uh, I hope to see you guys uh, again soon.